So the head teacher of Britain's most expensive private school is leaving her post after a revol revolt from parents who claim an ultra woke curriculum led to anti-Semitic incidents. So Robin Appleby, who has led the prestigious American school in London since 2007, is, a is apparently leaving to focus on her own well-being and that of her family. But insiders have told the Daily Mail she's being booted out of her £400,000 a year job because of her controversial curriculum. It's claimed her staff allegedly used the word, words like Nazi, swastika and Hitler to describe the reaction parents had to the school's lessons on race, which she introduced. Head teacher Janella Ajabi joins me now for this one. This is an interesting one, Janella. Thank you very much for joining me, by the way. Um, this is very interesting because we've heard, heard all sorts of stories coming out of the American school mm -hmm. uh, over the past uh, few months, and I wasn't sure to the extent to which some were true and some were not true. Mm. Effectively, am I right in thinking that she's implemented a kind of very sort of strict version of critical race theory into the school. There was even reports, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. there were reports that extracurricular activities after school saw some of the kids divided by race. Mm -hmm. Was that true, firstly? Well, I can't say for certain if it was true or not. Okay. But I can only imagine that what was happening is that the staff were trying to provide safe spaces, that's what I've heard, okay. for um, children who may feel unsafe. I see. But this, as far as I'm aware, has been done without actually asking those children or their parents if they were feeling unsafe. Because normally in a school, yes. if children are, for whatever reason, not happy, feeling afraid, feeling scared, their parents will contact the school directly sure. and ask that there's a resolution to the problem yes. rather than that an abstract um, concept like a safe space, yeah. is introduced and then children are shepherded without asking them into these places and yes. end up being segregated, as it were, so or what, separated. What, what do you think is, is going on here? Because there seems to be a real division between those who think that critical race theory is about teaching kids about history, about the reality of slavery, uh, about the, uh, obviously, Jim Crow and segregation in the US. Obviously, critical race theory came out of America. And those people who see that actually what this is doing is to emphasise with kids that the ra their race is the first and foremost important thing about them and that, um, and that people of colour are always going to be oppressed and white people are always oppressors. Which view do you take on this? I think as a head teacher, it's really important that staff are clear on the differences between facts, mm. which can be tested and proven and are generally accepted, and beliefs or okay. values, which are things that they may hold personally or beliefs that they are supposed to be promoting on behalf of the school yes. because the school's beliefs and values may be different to your own or maybe the beliefs that you are promoting on behalf of the state yes. or on behalf of the um, communities that you live in. The beliefs are different to the facts and I have to help staff to become aware of this difference so that in teaching um, we can be um, presenting where the beliefs are controversial yeah. a range of opinions on them and before that we can even be aware um, in presenting things that this part of this lesson is fact yes and um, we're going to think carefully when the belief or the value part of the lesson is going to be controversial so that's a really interesting distinction that you're making there because oh. uh, when Kemi Badenoch the equalities minister made this point in parliament she talked about how the teaching of critical race theory as uncontested fact, mm. that's what's illegal. That's mm -hmm. what violates the Education Act. Mm -hmm. It's not talk talking about mm -hmm. critical race theory would be fine, mm -hmm. so, so long as you say, but this is not shared, this view is not shared by everyone. Is the problem then that in the case of this specific head teacher, and I understand that you don't mm -hmm. want to get too much into the specifics of mm -hmm. her case, mm -hmm. but is, it, is the problem that she was effectively promoting her own particular ideological view as though it cannot be challenged? Uh, I, think, I think the problem here is a sort of confusion which seems to be happening now between um, what people are calling historical facts mm -hmm. and what people believe about um, which parts of the facts are important or how we deal with problems that have happened in the past today. Um, yes. How we choose to deal with a problem may not be a fact. It may be a belief that I share that's yes. different to somebody else. And um, in schools, we have to be aware where there is going to be controversy, that we are going to um, meet uh, the parents, meet our communities. Um, we're going to not ask parents to help us decide what to teach, but where there is controversy, we are going to share in advance. This is what your child will be learning about today. Yeah. Um, because parents are actually expecting children to come home talking about long division.
yeah. or commas sure. or um, <laughs> uh, the Spanish Armada. Yeah, sure. They're not expecting children to come home. And I've heard stories from parents. They're not expecting their children to come home um, to say to them, oh, um, uh, um, mum, um, there are some weird things that happen. For example, in fee-paying schools, um, there are, for example, black children in these schools, and they come home to their parents, and they're asking their parents, I don't understand, mummy. They said that all black people are oppressed, but and they don't understand how, when they're going to an exclusive school, yes. how they're oppressed. And, and sadder than that, actually, is a reality in most schools um, that I have found that, you know, five-year-olds, 11-year-olds, they don't... If you ask them, you know... Let's go back in time to the Tudor period or yes. to the Victorian period. Where would you be? And, you know, I work in schools which are 50% free school meals. So teachers think the children will see themselves as, um, you know, the Oliver Twist in the story, but they don't. Right, right. They are so full of their own self-confidence um, that they don't see themselves as the poor um, downtrodden person in history. Yeah, and they don't want to either. They don't want to. So, so this, and, and that's what's happening here. That this, but this raises another question, doesn't it, about, mm. about um, what, what has been criticised of being the sort of hyper-racialisation of children. Mm -hmm. Because small children are not in inherently racist. Not that I have seen. If they no. become racist because they are le learn to be that way, mm -hmm. and that's something that's a failure of socialisation. Mm -hmm. So by sort of emphasising and saying, look, the most important thing about you mm -hmm. is skin colour, mm -hmm. that... That can, in effect, make racism worse, can't mm -hmm. it? That, that's what I have found, and I have been a teacher for 20 years this year, and although there are lots of documents saying that even babies can recognise racial differences, that's not what I have found on the ground. Mm. Not only have I not found children come into school recognising or picking up on these differences, but that I haven't actually met many... I, 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 I can honestly say I haven't met any parents who are consciously trying to make their children think things that are racist. No, sure. I mean, I, be I, because we don't live in a society that I, tolerates that. I but, haven't met that. But this is... But, I mean, is there an argument, though, you know, to take the other stance, to take the stance of those who support critical race theory mm -hmm. in schools? Is that, you know, it is true that, in historically speaking, mm -hmm. there has been a failure to teach mm -hmm. kids about what happened mm -hmm. in country, about, about Britain's complicity in the slave trade. I mean, I certainly wasn't taught much about it in my school, but then I wasn't taught much about empire either. So I wasn't taught... I, I think I was just had a bad history teacher. Apologies if she's watching. But I think that might, you know, that might be the case. But I also think there are so many things that schools have or haven't taught... Mm. Um, that I don't go back now and say, can, 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 can we uh, refund these parents because we didn't teach this well enough? There are so many things yes. that have or haven't been taught. And, and, and there has to be a part of a parent where you feel a certain aspect of history is very important to your child. That's your duty to teach it. So sure, I um, it isn't something that... Um, it isn't something that we can just say to schools, you must teach all of these things. Parents yeah. are, are also responsible for helping their children to grow up into this world with the knowledge that the parent feels that this child needs to have about the world. Yeah. Schools have a huge amount of things to teach yes. and are trying to teach all of these things, but there are lots of things. I mean, grammar hasn't always been properly taught in the past. No, that's and, true. And we do our best now to make sure that they understand certain things, but that doesn't mean we turn everything um, uh, upside down and, 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 and don't recognise where there might be um, disagreement in what is going to be taught. Um, yeah. You know, you want to... You, you do want to confront controversial things, sure. but um, you also... I, th I think, as a school, you also have to really focus on the things that are um, factually accepted yep. um, and make a difference between teaching those and teaching what some people believe is how... what some people believe would be the way to react so, so to can the I ask you? Those it, are two different things. It does appear that mostly this kind of stuff is going into the posher schools, shall mm -hmm. we say. I mean, the American school mm -hmm. is the most expensive day school in the country. Mm -hmm. and, it, and the teachers that I know who contact me with the various screenshots of the training sessions mm -hmm. they've had to sit through, mm -hmm. which are very much pushing the idea of critical race theory, unconscious bias, they tend to be the posher schools. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Do you, do you have any idea why that is the case? Well, I can only say that, um, A... These the effects of this ideology 
is happening in many schools across okay. the country. It's not just the posher schools. It's just that in other schools, you may not have parents who feel confident enough um, to yes. report what's happening. And I suppose the media will be less interested. They're more interested in the, the sort of prestigious yeah, schools. Yeah, and I, I, that's true. Um, and some parents are actually nervous because they're worried that if they say something um, that others may disagree with, yeah. that they may be labelled. They'll be labelled racist, in other words. Yes, and, and, this and is... they may not be as confident with And what's quite sad that. about this is, you know, I've been a teacher myself in the past, I and mean, even when I was a teacher like 10 years ago, mm -hmm. schools are very good at handling racism. Mm -hmm. When it occurs, mm. they don't stand for it. You know, mm -hmm. they, they, it's not the case that we live in a, a country. I've heard people saying that schools are institutionally racist. I mean, mm -hmm. I think the opposite is true. They're mm -hmm. very alert to this mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So, mm -hmm. so this kind of thing, as I say, I, don't, I worry that it might make th things worse, mm -hmm. ultimately. I mean, ha where do you think we can go from here to tackle this? Well, for me, the really important thing as a school is focusing on the things that children need to be academically successful. Right. That's the really important thing. Yeah. And um, a focus on how we react to things that happen in the past is not quite the same as academics. Yes, I understand. So... Um, if we focused on the academics, maybe that would actually have an impact on equality for more people. Because, you know, when I look back in the past, the leading schools 100 years ago, their headmasters were always typing out little books um, on grammar or mathematics because they felt we're doing a great job. Let's share what we have learned about teaching well to other people. Right. That's what we'd have loved to see coming out of the American school because, yes. uh, you know... A-level maths, the candidate percentage is dropping year on year. Yep. The mathematics professors at universities are saying we just aren't getting the quality through. So if they were addressing that and, and sharing with more people, how can you teach maths successfully, we'd all be happy. Equality and would clearly, be improved, would clearly it not? The, clearly that's what the parents want. They want, they want, they want. The, they want the That's results. what the parents want. That's what other schools would like from the American school. Absolutely. Um, but we're focusing on something else. Well, uh, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, Janella Ajabi, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favorite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.